Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I hope everybody who lives in lives in the States had a wonderful Thanksgiving and everybody else around the world who watches my videos. I hope you had a wonderful pleasant day. Today we're going to go ahead and do a very simple uh, cargo SSTO tutorial. It's not going to be a big uh, cargo ship that's going to take way too long and I've got a lot to do but this will be a, a small conceptual craft if you've ever had trouble trying to get uh, cargo into space via SSTO. Now cargo SSTOs have always been a little more trickier than your passenger SSTOs because of the fact that even though passengers do have uh, weight it's not a whole lot and so basically what that means is that your passenger or your um, center of mass doesn't really shift all that much whereas cargo well that's a whole different story now is it? Cargo can be a lot like a fuel tank in the fact that it can weigh several tons going up there and then suddenly when it's deployed it weighs virtually almost nothing because it's empty there's nothing there anymore so when building a cargo ssto a lot of times what i do is i keep the center of mass when it comes to engines and fuel tanks which means that i put the fuel tanks and the engines on the side of the craft i don't put them way in the back i put them on the sides directly on the sides this helps to keep the center of mass exactly where it's supposed to be at all times okay so let's go ahead and dive right in Okay, so I've built a couple of these small little cargo SSTOs before, and they can carry up to anywhere between 7 or 8 tons into orbit. So a good sized satellite, or an emergency fuel payload, or maybe some ore, something of that nature. For this particular SSTO, small, uh, simple cargo SSTO, we're going to start off, start off, which is like start off, but start, start off, with a shock, 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 oh my gosh, and shaka, 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 shock cone intake. This will be our primary intake. We're going to put a Mark II 1.25 adapter on there. Have a simple Mark II cargo bay on there. Then we're going to kind of repeat the process and then taper it off right at the end. So this should be the body of your SSTO. Simple SSTO. Simple cargo SSTO. The reason why we try to mirror one side to the other is so that we can keep the balance almost perfect throughout the entire design. Now this is going to change a little bit because I'm going to add a cargo, not uh, cargo, but a cockpit right here. But Veos, why can't you add one of these cockpits right here and, and have it all in the front and stuff? Well, for starters, the cockpit that I'm going to choose weighs half this much, which is always a good thing when you're looking at SSTO. Weight and drag are a big thing. All right, there's my cockpit. I'm going to put that like that. I'm, on, no, no, I'm not going to leave it like this now, okay, because that, that's ugly. However, I will grab it and smoosh it in. Oh, Veos, all the clipping. I know, clipping, yes. Oh, horrible. It's only too bad that, um, what's that mod called, uh, like extra space plane parts or something like that? I would love to download that mod, but there's so many cool parts that it completely kind of washes over the stock game. <laughs> I get a lot of confused people watching this being like, what's that part? What's that part? Why don't I have that part in my game? So we're going to make our own cool space plane parts in a sense. Now, yes, I am running something called restock, but that just gives me new skins for the stock parts. All right, let's look at our center of mass. Okay, it's a little far back, but that's fine. Because once we start adding the engines and the tanks and everything on the sides, it's going to start lining up towards the middle. Now for this design, in order to keep things steady, or should I say sturdy, we're going to attach everything to this cargo bay. The fuel tanks, the wheels, the gears, the, the, the wings, everything. In other words, the wing won't be first, and then I put a fuel tank on the wing, and then I put a landing gear on the fuel tank, because all that weight's going to be teetering right here between the the joint between the cargo bay and the wing, and it's not going to be pretty. Yes, I can go in and hit, what is it, auto strut. I'm going to be doing that anyway, so why not have everything tied into one part for extra strength. All right, now, in this design, we're probably going to be using only two rapiers, not three or four. I think two rapiers might be actually a little bit of an overkill, but they're going to help with balance overall. Although I'm thinking that one rapier might not be enough. It might be just not as... Uh, it might be just a little bit inadequate. So two's fine. It's, it might be a little over overpowered, but it, it's it's fine. All right, I'm going to use the uh, T400 fuel tank, the Rapia engine, and of course the small aerodynamic nose cone. And I'm going to put these on both sides. You'll see why in a minute. For those of you who've seen my SSTO tips and tricks, 
you'll know why I'm doing this. Now we're definitely going to need liquid fuel for the rapiers when it, when they're going through the atmosphere. I could put the Mark 1 liquid fuel fuselage on here, but we're not going to need that much fuel. That's a lot of fuel. That's 800 units of fuel. I don't think we'll be in the atmosphere long enough to burn most of that up. Technically, I'll, I only think we need about maybe one of these, maybe a little bit more than one. Well, like one in one in one in a quarter so what we're going to do instead is we're going to use the mark zero mark zero liquid fuel fuselage with only 50 units of fuel i'm not too worried about part count this is going to be so small the part count's not really going to be an issue but with these little guys you can really much stick them almost anywhere all right so i'm going to make kind of a formation like this i'm going to put the little small nose cones on here and then i'm going to hold alt and copy this well actually no <laughs> i'm going to hit the x key and double it. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna move this over just a pinch. Grab this, bring it in, pull it in just a pinch. There we go. Notice when I'm building, I'm always keeping the center of mass directly in the middle or as close as possible. I'm gonna go into my inline cockpit and take away my monopropellant. This is going to, to be a very simple cargo SSTO. Probably nothing more than maybe a satellite retriever or uh, installer. Doesn't dock with anything or whatnot. You can do that in your own build when you get the time. All right, now that we have our fuel requi require requirements, I cannot speak today. We're just going to pull these away real quick. And we're going to put on some delta wings. They're not that heavy, 0.2 tons, it's fine. Now, I would love to use the big S space plane tail fin. I mean, it, it looks cool as hell, right? Problem is, it doesn't generate any lift. Yeah, weird, huh? Plus, the delta wing is about half its weight so it saves on weight but we're not done quite done yet we're gonna grab the structural wing c place it on here flip it around bring it up okay that's the gist of it the fuel tanks back in put this back up like that there we go very nice we're gonna turn on our aerodynamic overlay it's way up there but we're not done finished building the wings just yet i'm gonna take a delta deluxe winglet put it on the ends like so an Elevon 5, or Elevon, or Elevon, 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 uh, I don't know. There we go. It's a little, it's a little meh, a little crooked, but we can hide that. Okay, coming together. Grab the wing, pull it back. There we go. Okay, we're almost done. Flip this thing upside down, put on some gears. Now, I think the connections are pretty strong with the fuel tanks and cargo bay, so I'm just going to put the gears on top of the fuel tanks. If it changes, we can always go back and re redo it. Make sure our gears are just behind the center of mass so that we can tilt up and take off. All right, now we're going to grab those aerodynamic nose cones use the move tool bring them in keep going keep going all the way back uh, there we go now being kind of a realist uh, i know that the plume from the rapier engine is gonna burn this up realistically speaking so i want to try to move this out of the way just a pinch problem is if i do that it's gonna stick out in the front and look kind of weird so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this off right here put a nose cone back on there sharpen it up put a nose cone on this side and then put this fuel tank against this fuel tank. And then I'm just gonna squeeze it in there just a pinch. There we go. That looks much better, much nicer, much more clean cut. So that means that the plume of this thing will probably come out and maybe touch this a little bit, but we can always imagine there's a little bit of a heat protection right there. And the pilot should be fine. I don't think the plume would come out and hit the pilot at all. At least we'll pretend that's not the case. Okay, now open this up. Time for our cargo. Put a docking port there, flip it around, docking port, and we're going to just test out the max weight of this thing, which I believe is about seven to eight tons. So two of these small ore holding tanks or medium size ore holding tanks should be about seven-ish tons. Just going to squeeze that in there. This is a test anyway. I'm not trying to be all accurate with the cargo. Okay, so now I take the cargo out, put it in, and as you can see, I'm going back and forth with it. The center of mass isn't changing all that much, so that's good. That's because we've designed it to be that way. Now let's empty out the fuel tanks and see what, what we got. Notice that the center of mass is almost lined up with like this line right here and this line right here for the liquid fuel fuselages. So let's remember that as we empty out the fuel tanks. All right, so all the fuel tanks are empty and the center of mass has not moved at all. So the center of mass is pretty much right there forever, whether you're loaded to the brim with cargo, full fuel, full of, full of fuel or not, it will never move. This is primarily because of the simple fact that we made sure that we mirrored as much as we possibly can on the left and right side, as well as the front and back. So it's in a way, it's like a big plus sign. Now, of course, what I'm about to do here is for helping in uh, re-entry. 
Got a cubic octagonal strut strapped to a probodyne uh, OK2. Make sure my toggle, toggle, toggle snap is on. Wow, I can't speak today. Hold down shift and just... I'm going to put a fuel cell on here. You know, I just noticed something, that this actually weighs 0 0.04, while the fuel cell weighs 0 0.05. So to help with keeping the center of mass still in the middle as much as possible, I think what I'll do instead is I'll grab this and put it on this side. Alright, number one is toggle rapier engines, number two is switch mode, number three will be to open the cargo bay, number four will be to release the cargo, Undock. Number five will be switch control over to the probe for re-entry. And number six will be to put control back into the inline cockpit. Alright, time to put some lights in here. I'm going to use the wonderful light strips that come with the most recent update. I'm also going to put the light strips on this side. Other than that, I think we're good to go. Okay, so right now, uh, Kerbal Engineer is telling us that we have over 8,000 meters per second total delta V. This is, of course, calculating the atmosphere. And yeah. We're going to have some fun. Hit the C key, get into the cockpit. Now let's fly this thing via cockpit. Maybe I... I don't know if this is actually the smartest idea in the world. Uh, activate engines. Is SAS on? I think so. Yep, SAS is on. And full power. Oh, here we go. Here we go, oh boy. Lift up, there we go, there she goes. All right, gears up, here we go. Now, I don't see an option to click on for like prograde, so we might have to zoom out for that. I like how they grow, gl grow, glow red. It's a very nice feature for the restock. Oh yeah, we're kicking it. Uh, we're about to turn into a fireball. At this point, I could imagine the canopy would have like a heat shield that would go over it. Uh, I, I would imagine anyway. You don't want to lose any meters per second. So as soon as you see the meters per second slow down and start to go backwards, activate your, uh, switch the mode on the rapiers. And we're going backwards now. Okay, switching over to rockets. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to I'm gonna actually have to exit here so I can click on the prograde. And we're at 60,000 in apoapsis. Okay, clicking on prograde. Apoapsis at 75. Turning off engines. Engines shut off. Hey. We're in space. All right, coming up on our apoapsis. Prepare full burn in three, two, one, go. Try to get the time to apoapsis as close to zero as possible. There we are. <laughs> 267 meters per second delta V left over. Not bad at all. But look at that. That is a beautiful view. Look at this view. Look at this view. Oh, that is pretty. That is pretty. Where's my hyperdrive? Damn it. Star Wars the shit out of this. We're ready to release the satellite. Open her up. And release the satellite, or in this case, uh, the dummy payload. Whee! There she goes. Alright, time to re-enter the Kerbin's atmosphere. Okay, now we're pointing retrograde. Let's go ahead and burn just a little bit. And uh, about 55,000 meters periapsis, that's that's fine. Switching over to prograde. Now I'm going to hit the number 5 key, and that's going to be our re-entry control. Number 5. There she goes. So no the noise. The nose is going to be pointed up the entire time. This is really going to help us out a lot. Alright, looks like we got through re-entry. I see some land coming up on us. Switching over from re-entry control to cockpit control. Coming in for a landing. Although I really wish we had a runway. Don't have time. How's my rapiers looking? Am I still on, uh... Nope. Air breathing. Good. Very good. Alright, gears out. Here we go. <laughs> I am nervous as all hell. I don't, I really don't see myself making it, but it's a possibility. All right. Here we go. Hang on. Hang on. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. 
<laughs> we were sliding there for a second. Whoo! Uh, uh, my, my heart went pitter patter there for a second. I'll be damned. Yep. Sweetness. So the simple things that we learned today for keeping cargo craft, um, cargo SSTOs from flipping out or going out of control is to always mirror the front and the back as well as the sides. Try to keep that center of, uh, center of fudge, center of mass directly in the middle at all times. Remember that one shot cone can power up to four rapiers. I've seen some SSTOs that got so many air intakes on it, it's ridiculous. They've got like one shot cone per rapier and, and it's like, that's a lot of drag. Remember to think outside the box as well. Given some more time, I'd probably put RCS on this thing, as well as maybe even a small little docking port of some kind. Perhaps in the back, which would make more sense because it's right there next to the cockpit. But anyway, I'm all out of time. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.